not that this is ever a good idea, but if you want a great way, guaranteed way, to make your stomach turn in knots, read stuff from the New York or the Los Angeles blogs about what they think it'd take to acquire Brian Reynolds. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dayan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. Oh, they want Reynolds, and they build him up as the next big thing right up until they start getting into their fake trade proposals. And then it's, oh, they can't have that prospect. No way. He's the future. Oh, they can't have this prospect either. Or they can't have that guy. Are you kidding? This is the Pirates. They should be lucky that we're even talking to them. And then when that one poor, lonely soul, who's the Pirates fan, dares to tread into this conversation realm, wherever on social media it might happen to be, they'll say something like, do you know anything at all about Reynolds? Have you ever seen him play? And they'll be like, whoa, look, it's somebody who follows the Pirates. Ah." You know, this stuff is the byproduct, not of Pittsburgh's stature as a market. That one just, wow, that one drives me insane. It's not some baseball-ish byproduct of the team being bad the last three years. It's a byproduct of Bob Nutting owning the franchise. And those of you who've been listening to or reading me for a long time will know that I've probably done as much as anyone in the Pittsburgh media could possibly do when it comes to giving the man the benefit of the doubt. I've gotten to know him in a lot of ways. I've really gotten to like him. He's not a bad guy. He's not some cartoon villain. But he is cheap. And he is not at all competitive. And those are two massive strikes on you as a franchise owner regardless of whether there's a salary cap. And heaven knows no one's been a more vocal advocate for the cap than I have. But there's just nowhere to go if you're cheap and non-competitive. And as a result, the best possible Christmas gift that Pittsburgh sports fans, baseball or not, could get would be for nutting to sell this franchise. Unless, unless he were to do the right thing for once. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. I prefer most of my arguments with some degree of nuance, and I know that's not the cool thing when you're doing the whole spoken word concepts like this. Uh, Everybody wants to go with flaming hot takes in one direction or the other, and then you leave the studio and there's a couple of your bros out there in the hallway fist bumping you. Hey, man, that was a sizzling take. Yeah, hot take. And I don't like to do that. But with this specific subject, I'm as hot takey as it gets because I've run out of the other temperatures along the way. If this franchise does not keep Brian Reynolds, and by keep, I mean keep into his free agency years, at least one or two of them, he needs to sell. He needs to sell. Because the idea that Reynolds can't be signed by this organization because of its limitations is 100% incorrect. The idea that signing Reynolds would somehow uh, cripple the organization from keeping future talent in Pittsburgh is one. 
and 10% incorrect. Because they can. They know they can. They know the money that's there. They know the money that's coming in. They know the extent to which it's growing and that it's going to grow. And they know that they have enough available to them in baseball ops to take care of their one and only good slash best player that they have on the roster. Because by the time Reynolds turns 31, 32, even 33 years old, if you want to go that long out, most of their better guys, most of their younger guys that they themselves say they're waiting on, the big cavalry, all those number one overall picks and so forth, by the time they get here, and by the time they need to be paid before they leave for free agency, Reynolds will already be done. He doesn't line up with these guys, except except for keeping him in Pittsburgh through the prime years of his career, at which point, a lot like Andrew McCutcheon, you can let him go and not really sweat it. This isn't the age of Roberto Clemente and Willie Stargell staying with one team forever. Very, very, very few do it. There are only a handful of Joey Votto's in the whole game. But to keep Reynolds through his best years, through his early 30s, that's something this franchise has to do. They are not just any other old franchise that you can measure in the same way. And that's one of the biggest mistakes they make. They look around at the rest of the industry and they say, oh, well, look, this team over here does this and this, and this team over here does that and that, so it's okay for us to do it. No, no, because this organization, regardless of how many times the front office has changed or even ownership has changed, has behaved the same way for basically 40 years. And the statute of limitations got burned up 20 years ago. That's the reality, and so is the necessity to keep Reynolds in Pittsburgh. When we come back, J1Q. comes from Wayne, who writes, I really enjoy the Daily Shot of Pirates. They're my favorite team, and I like the discussions. I try to remain positive despite the last three years of hopelessness. I have hope for this coming season with the additions that Ben Charrington's made. My hope is that later on in the season and next year, when the younger players are all up, they'll spend the money to supplement the roster and compete for a playoff spot. Maybe I'm crazy, but as a huge baseball fan... I have to try and stay positive. Spring training will be here before we know it. Beat them, Bucks. I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who listens to Daily Shot of Pirates. I will occasionally poke fun at you. You know that I'm not being serious, especially when I tell you not to listen to the show, which I seem to do once every two weeks. I do three of these a day. Some of you might or might not know one each on the Steelers, Penguins and Pirates and keep this between us. But I'm really partial to this particular group because I've been there going back to, uh, you know, childhood was easy because childhood Pirates were really, really good and they could hit and everything else. And they had that fun run with the skinny version of Barry Bonds and and everybody else for a couple of years. And since then, it's been, yeah. And my goodness, this beautiful ballpark has been sitting there for 20 some years and has really only had one memorable night, you know, (laughs) when it comes to something really meaningful anyway. One memorable night in 20 some years. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. But you're still here and you're still listening to this and you still, as you just described it yourself, find a way to muster up some hope. I'm not going to lie. As as much as I criticize these guys and as skeptical as I am about the Reynolds situation, 
I've got hope too. And maybe there's just a little bit of sap coming out of me here because we're sitting here on the eve of Christmas, almost literally. But there's more to it. There is talent in the organization. And that talent is now closer to Pittsburgh than it's ever been. My skepticism, and this has been the case for more than a year now, has been aimed at little things that I've seen along the way that make me doubt the competitive spirit of those running the team. And as such, doubting that they'll do what you're hoping that they do at some stage. I keep waiting for a sign. And I think, without speaking for anyone who listens to the show, I think maybe you do too, which is why there's an overreaction to a Carlos Santana signing. It's a nice, okay signing. And that's about it. He's 37, showed some power last year, great clubhouse guy. Yay, awesome, wonderful. Could turn into a decent platoon with G Man Choi at first base. But if that's what everyone's getting excited about, then I dare say that you're making it that much easier on them to stick with the status quo. I'm not comfortable doing that. I'm just not. I don't trust them to become competitive, not the team, the management, to find that competitive spirit until I see it in action, not in words. I'm going to have a tough time believing it. Listen, I could do this all weekend and ruin everyone's holiday. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas for real in the truest sense of that. Enjoy it with family, friends. Give everyone a hug. Smile, laugh. Do all those things that you can't do during baseball season. Let's do this again Monday. (laughs) 